This is a pretty dead one, as you guys can see. Might be able to just. So you gotta be careful of. That didn't take that much pressure. And if a, a windstorm came by, even though that would have killed you, that would definitely uh, left you with some hurts. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a close up on a piece of gear we'll be testing here this weekend. It comes from our good friend Dan Eastland over at Dogwood Knives. Now, Dan is an apprentice of Andy Roy. Of course, you guys see my Fiddleback Forge Hunter over here. But this is called the Grizzly and the Cub. I've done a sweet little overview of this uh, piggyback style sheath and set. So we have this large, almost butcher style. It's a very much going for a classic frontier type feel. Very nice ergonomic handles. Nice flat grind. The sheath is pretty neat as well because you can adjust it. Also, we have a pouch right here. Throw a little survival kit in it if, if we so need. Right now, we're just out having fun with it. Now, I think this set goes for about 420, which is a little more expensive than his normal piece. A lot of his knives go for about 125, which is a great value. Uh, but this is a pretty all-encompassing set, and it's very neat. You guys can see Rick Lowe did the, uh, the leather work, and he is a very skilled craftsman. In previous videos, you're able to take off the skinner, so if you just want to walk around and leave the larger knife at camp, and then of course you can snap it back in here. Now this is a simple pouch style sheath, so it's not that high speed low drag from your tactical guys, but you can throw this on your belt if you want it to hang pretty easily. And I really like this Baldridge style rig. Great leather work. In this pouch, we got an Altoids tin in there for a survival kit. If this was our self-contained kit. Which knows a lot of you guys have the skill set to make something like this work for you. Nice package. And of course when I'm walking or doing whatever I can always slide it to the rear, get it out of the way of my side arm if I'm out there by myself and I need to protect myself from zombies or whatever. Shoot on what, uh, what I'm sleeping in this weekend. Went and hung the hung the hammock under a nine and a half by nine and a half tarp. Just an Eno, Eno single nest. Got an MMS green bag. Got two bungee cords on each corner for sort of a diamond effect, and then two stakes with lines going out off the other corners. And uh, that should keep the rain off. We've been having some problems with flies and mosquitoes here in camp and me and our camera guy Mark here, we're going to go and do a little hunt for a unique solution to bug repellent. I've done that a few times. Just here in the, uh, in the cattle pen now, we're making our way down to the lower end where the uh, cattle tend to hang out a little bit more and uh, go to the bathroom. So, see you when you get down there, guys. Okay, guys, we're uh, back here. We've made it to our destination for the unique bug repellent. Here's our unique bug repellent. All right, we came down and there, next to where we're camped at, there's a uh, cow pasture and a lot of the north pushed over here so there's some dry compressed cow patties that are great for use as a bug repellent. Just put them on your fire and the smoke will dissipate off the fire and it works really well. It'll keep away flies and mosquitoes and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to use it for when we get back to camp. So I'm going to take my conveniently placed trash bag that was in my pocket and we're going to Grab us a cow pie or two. 
to burn on our campfire. That is, I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cow pie. <laughs> All right, guys, we just got back from the uh, cow pasture here. We've got our bag of cow pie, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and you just take these and the chunks, and you just toss them on the fire. And as they burn, they release something that really likes to get rid of the uh, get rid of the flies. These have a little bit more straw in them than to be desired, but some of the more clumpier ones will work better. So as you can see we got enough for the night. Like that one, nice there, a little moisture in it. We'll put off some good smoke to keep the flies and the bugs and stuff out of here all night for us so we can sleep and not get all eaten up by mosquitoes. Alright guys, we got this little nice little uh, extra piece of metal back there for this grizzly and this allows us to get a nice Nice handle on this so we can do some draw work and get in here and take out the camera easily. Alright, guys, we're getting uh, pretty late here. It's about 1800 hours, so we got a few moments. Well, about an hour of light left. So we're gonna wrap up. We got our camp pretty squared away. We got a lot of work done today with the camp. You guys can see we have our horse, little work horse slash seat uh, based off these two trees and we split a split a log and put around it. Over here to my right, uh, we have another bench. We use this anvil. I'm also gonna use this as my shelter for this evening. We have a larger tarp above me. Of course, we have this large multi-cam 12 by 10 from our friends over there at Bushcraft Outfitters. Uh, bushcraftusa.com and so we're pretty much squared away we got our uh, tripod over there for our fire our fire rocks made we're about halfway done our table so we're gonna take a break here from recording finish making our table and then probably get chow squared away right Ryan? oh yeah all right so what's your favorite part of the day um a little cow pie adventure the cow pie adventure is pretty cool so and then maybe a little bit of a uh, squirrel hunting a little later tonight yeah so maybe rabbits Alright guys, well, you know, all good things must come to an end and uh, our day here was uh, is over now. We gotta head back home and get some real food. Yeah. No, I'm hungry. In the shower. In the shower. Sh oh yeah, shower. I remember that thing. Shower's pretty good. But you know, our camp is pretty good for the first couple days here. Of course, we're gonna clear out some more of that path. There's a game trail down there. We might have to investigate that a little bit more. This will probably be some uh, good firewood by the time we get back. We got our horses pretty squared away. One cool thing 
about this. I don't know if you guys can perceive it from the angle, but this is split down the middle, so we can actually have the saw work down here through here and actually have these two areas to brace it if you're a one-man solo job. Of course, you have a nice hickory beating stick. Worked pretty well so far. And then we have our nice little bench, or need be. I might have to do a bigger fire pit over here next time, Ryan. Yeah, make a big community fire pit. Yeah. And then uh, our trusty uh, tripod, which we're still uh, working on some different things. So many options with this, from making this a chair itself to a raised bed plat a raised platform for a bed. And then last but not least, our nice bush table, which we might need to put some more support on in the near future. But you know what? If you're just eating, standing up, like me, if you don't have a feel like squatting on the ground, it works pretty well. All right, guys, we'll appreciate you coming down and uh, hanging out with us on our trip here. We're going to be uh, walking out of the field here pretty soon, and we look forward to seeing you guys out here yourselves. All right, guys. Well, thanks, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at adam at equippedindoor.com. You guys take care. Be safe out there. Remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks.